Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Leonardo, and I'm going to present this uh, improving CPU isolation with per CPU spin locks. I give some performance numbers here. Um, my name is Leonardo. I work at Red Hat, uh, trying to work more on real time stuff. Uh, you can find me with this handle, Leo Braz, in those networks. Well, when we are talking about uh, mm -hmm. Uh, our real time, what we want is to run these time sensitive tasks without interruption. Uh, one of the ways of achieving this is isolate, isolating the CPU. So no other things are running there. It helps in a lot of uh, workloads. Uh, and one of the things that bother us uh, in CPU isolation is that there are APIs. There are uh, other CPUs scheduling work on the isolated CPUs, which should not be uh, happening a lot, right? Uh, I'm focusing here in one user case. Uh, it's the per CPU caches. The, the whole idea is, is very efficient. The idea is that you have a single resource, uh, a global resource, and you try to um, use it with multiple CPUs. And it's kind of hard because you have to compete. CPUs are competing for that resource. Uh, what we can do is to add these uh, caches. And, and the whole idea is that you, you operate in local caches, which is quite efficient. And whenever you need anything else, you just uh, lock the resource, and then it works. I mean, uh, you reduce access to like uh, global uh, locks, and it makes things run faster. Uh, the thing is with this strategy is if you need to uh, request things, uh, let, let's say you are running out of memory, for example, and you need to request this uh, resource memory from the other CPU caches, you need to uh, do an API, meaning that you will stop the CPU for doing whatever it was doing and you will require its CPU time. And it does not. Oh. Wait, I, not I took your presenter, so. What? Do you need a presenter right now? Uh, maybe oh, I, yeah, I'm not being able to slide. go to the next slide. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, was, I didn't get to see I, You <laughs> noticed. <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, next slide. OK. Uh, this is how uh, it mostly works. Uh, you have your hot path, which is the thing that you use most. Uh, you do the local lock, do the local work, un look the local unlock it. And whenever, eventually, you need to access the, the, the caches from the remote CPUs, you will uh, schedule work on that CPU. Could you, could you please go to Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, not mine. Not to I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's making it better and put it back to you. So, okay, this, so they, they changed the way things work. This, this is a case of CPU isolation that wasn't <laughs> respected. What was the name of your presentation? Oh, presentation. Presentation. <laughs> presentation. <laughs> uh, could you do the next slide, please? Uh, I'm just going to make you presenter again. Okay. Do you have it now? Let me. Perfect. There's two LPC speakers. That's three LPC speakers. Tell me which one is us. Uh, and for some reason, I can't go to the next. Okay. Do you have it? Can you just take presenter from here? Because it will allow you to take There's three LPC speakers. Steve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Presenter. Okay, great. No problem. Uh, the idea is that this in this strategy, this uh, local cache strategy, uh, this thing here generates an API, and that's bad for CPU isolation. Uh, so what would be great if we could come with another efficient strategy that doesn't require the the uh, schedule work on isolated CPUs. And the, the simplest and maybe dumbest uh, way of doing that is using uh, per CPU spin locks. Uh, the whole idea is that uh, differently, uh, in a different way, unless, uh, sorry, uh, instead of using the local lock, you get the spin lock and everything works the same. Whenever you need to do remote work on uh, remote caches, uh, on a remote CPU's cache, you instead of scheduling work there, you just get the spin lock, the, the per CPU spin lock of that uh, CPU and do the work. Uh, and it's great because since these uh, remote operations uh, happen quite uh, rarely, we can just uh, 
don't worry about the, the contention. Uh, and there's, that Mel Gorman did some work related to that in this commit that I pointed here. Uh, it's easier to show this that way. Uh, the whole idea is that you sub, uh, you replace the spin locks, uh, the local locks with spin locks, and then you, uh, for each CPU, instead of like scheduling work, you just grab that CPU's spin lock. Uh, but whenever I say use a spin lock instead of a local lock, what everyone will ask is, well, but spin locks are uh, costly. The, we don't use them for a reason. Uh, and most of those costs come from contention, uh, getting cache line exclusiveness and memory barriers. Contention, as I explained before, is not a problem because these remote operations are quite rare. I run for hours and I could not get one case where someone tried to get the spin lock and was not able. Uh, getting cache line exclusiveness uh, is not very costly because you are like 99.999% of the time you are operating in your own cache line. Uh, in your, uh, you don't need to, to uh, invalidate cache lines uh, because you are mostly working on your cache line. And the other, the last thing is memory barriers, which are not supposed to be that much expensive, but we are seeing this uh, cost here. Uh, those are the, uh, for getting numbers here uh, on how much a spin lock, local per CPU spin lock actually costs. I did these two tests. Uh, the idea is that I run a million times and get how many clock cycles that does it take. Uh, I run on x86 and ARM, uh, get the, the number of cycles, and that's it. Uh, that's the test number one, as I said. Uh, this test lock here is getting replaced. Uh, the reference is local lock, so every number will be like any more cycles. Uh, I do use the spin lock, inlined spin lock, and this uh, textbook spin lock, which uses exchange instead of compare exchange, just to be sure to uh, fetch the idea of how much we are expending more needing to do a full CAS uh, operation instead of a blind CAS. Uh, the test one results is that a normal uh, spin lock on x86 took uh, 35 clock cycles extra. But when you go to uh, inline spin locks, it goes down more than half. And this uh, textbook example of uh, spin lock takes a little less cycles in general terms. Uh, you have this k lock, uh, k malloc test, uh, the same idea, but uh, I created a C group with. Uh, uh, memory uh, limitations and just did a lot of k malloc. The, the, the locks here were changed in the uh, memcg code. So the idea is that I'm testing on a real example here. Uh, and this is how much extra it costs for hk malloc. On x86, it costs us 90 extra clock cycles. But if you inline this uh, spin lock, it it takes like four extra cycles for a full uh, K malloc. On ARM, uh, it costs a little more, but anyway, the, the, the textbook example of spin lock here, it becomes very expensive. That may be the reason why uh, we had opted up for uh, compare exchange. Uh, just a few numbers. Just commenting on like inlining the spin locks is a, is a good way of uh, saving time. I mean, uh, inlining it, it's enough for getting more than half of the cost of the, the spin lock. In, in this example here, it takes even more, like a lot. So maybe spin locks, local spin locks are not that costly and we can like afford to replace the local locks in this case. Uh, uh, the whole idea, I already concluded, but uh, there is a question, why? well, PremTRT already turns local locks into spin locks, uh, which is good because it means that someone already is uh, have a, a success case on that. Uh, but there is a solution that we can just afford to because uh, on, pre on PremTRT enabled, it costs mostly nothing. And there is uh, this question, can we just improve CPU isolation on this scenario where uh, preempt RT 
needs to be enabled for this improvement to happen. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, why haven't we done that before? I mean, uh, we have in, in Premtap RT enabled, we have always to pick a spin lock. Why are we scheduling work on that CPU and not just like grabbing the spin lock instead? Uh, and here I propose, I sent this patch before, uh, I propose that uh, the name, the name is, is bogus. I just could not think on a, a good name for that. But the whole idea is that you can get, if you can get the other CPUs uh, local lock, in this case of a spin lock, uh, it's, we can create uh, new uh, functions. And uh, instead of like scheduling work on, we can use this uh, helpers, uh, local schedule work on. And uh, instead of like really scheduling, we just grab the spin lock and do the work. The, the idea of implementing this is basically that you have your uh, function that will not run, be run remotely. You use just the local log. And if it, the test can be run remotely, meaning remotely and not, not in the same CPU, uh, you can just put the CPU number here. It will do the work and just get out. The idea is that this local log and here will grab the, the local log of the other CPU, which in this case would be a spin lock. Uh, and when you will require some a remote work, you use this local queue work on, uh, which here I explained that when preempt RT is enabled, it just grabs the, the remote spin lock, which is the, the local lock, and do the required work. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I suppose you yeah. can have any questions. Just real, real quick. You you said convert uh, local locks into spin locks. You mean convert spin locks into local locks? Yes. We like the idea is convert local locks. Into yeah, because you some, sorry, some sorry, of your I'm slides kind of kept saying converting local locks into spin locks. I'm like, I think you meant the other way around. I just want to clarify that. Yeah, okay. the idea is to convert local locks into spin locks. That's mm -hmm. right. Take two. Um, the local locks came from RT, and they mostly come from the reason that we try to replace the prem disabled sections. That's why they became prem disabled non RT. Um, we used to have the local end thingy, but to keep the code the same for RT and non RT, we got rid of it and had the schedule work thing just to have the same convention on non RT. And yeah, that's mostly it. What was your head? Come again? Did you press overhead and read? So repeat after that, the overhead. The overhead. Overhead of like RT, this implementation RT, we have overhead. What overhead? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the implementation of um, when you did like what RT does with like how you did all this, and I guess you kind of said it too, there was really no measurable overhead. Was there overhead? So basically, if you implemented this without all of RT, did right. the kernel notice it? There's mostly no overhead because those logs mostly are never hit. Right. The origin, the origin use case is uh, preempt disabled, uh -huh. and most of the folks that are care about it run it with a preempt server. With preempt disabled is completely gone. So but I guess it'd be very good. Have you done more benchmarks on this to see how this impacts like normal work workloads or various workloads? Yeah, I mean th yeah. this this that, that's true here is. The example of yeah. a real workload. I mean, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I replaced the the the, the spin the local lock with spin locks uh, for. And you replaced the spin locks with local locks. Yes. Uh, no uh, local <laughs> locks for spin locks. Wait. Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of the the local locks oh, yeah. on these. Oh, uh, so they have local locks here. Then you're trying to remove them with a spin lock. Yes. Oh, that's okay. correct. So you are doing that. Yeah, okay, so uh, nice. and I replaced the whole strategy here. So I took the uh, the idea of uh, scheduling work on and just uh, grab the remote spin lock and do this stuff. And those are the, the, the numbers that uh, the overhead that I found. Does that answer? Does it work? I, um, I'm curious. I, I think there's the premise here that every one of these isolated CPUs actually needs to have this cache data that you're trying to protect. So I don't know the code. 
can you tell us, did you, did you have a look at the users and see, do the isolated CPUs actually need to maintain this cache data that where you're trying to avoid the schedule work? Uh, on the previous suggestion that I had uh, on a previous patch, the, the, the solution was that people said just, well, in this MemCG thing, uh, it's easier just not to have the cache, but the cache was there for a reason. I mean, it brings more performance because you don't have to keep operating on the local, uh, uh, on the local, uh, sorry, in the global spin lock, for example, for getting more memory. Uh, so yeah, it can be done, but it impacts performance. I'm trying to get with a solution that does that or impacts as little as possible. Thank you. Yuri and then uh, Raymond. We have two minutes, yeah. Uh, in the case, you saw that uh, uh, E9 spin not has a uh, pretty good performance benefit, but uh, the fact that uh, in not, the E9 of spin off code is controlled by some configure variable, and by default, they are off. So if you want to use it, um, the reason why they are off is because uh, they, we don't want to increase the uh, size of the text and yes. also the function size will get increased if they uh, use spin up and spin up not. Um, so do you think that, that will be, it will be useful to have a variant of spin up that explicitly in it uh, so that it can be used uh, in the case of the, the local lock thing? Uh, to Sorry, help could, that? Could, could you repeat the question? My question is, do we need a special variant of spin knock and spin on knock that are explicitly united to make sure that you can get the benefit without affecting the other spin knock code? Yeah, what I did was using the raw spin lock. If I, if I recall correctly, that was the raw spin lock. The idea is that it's already inlined. There is, as you said, if you just do the spin lock, it won't be aligned. But I, I went down in the, the chain there and, uh, and replaced the, the spin lock type for a raw spin lock type. And on both uh, systems, uh, the, uh, it inlined the, the spin lock for that code specifically. I mean, I'm not inlining everything in the kernel just for this, uh, th those three uh, implementations that use it. Uh, okay, yeah, one what's been not is yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we can take it offline, but I was wondering about, about the actual, let's say, benchmark that you actually run when you, because you said uh, the remote operations are, not that frequent, uh, but like we have particular uh, situation where we actually see lots of them. So I was just wondering if you can provide more information about the actual workload that you uh, that you run. Uh, the workload that I run? Yeah, to, to actually say, be able to say, I don't see many of the remote operations. So this is time. Right? Yeah, yeah, we can take it offline. Sure, because, sure. Uh, we, asked, uh, we have a chat online. Please log in and actually answer. Like, okay. Okay. So you can sure, the chat. I'll do that. You get word as well. You guys work for the same company. Yeah, you no, can check. Uh, that is why I said uh, we can. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.